Okay, so we are in this whole month of November. We started in October. We're talking about being rooted in glory, which was our original theme for the year. We got sidetracked a little bit, but we back. And we're being rooted in glory, but we're going to be rooted in glory through spiritual discipline. Someone say disciplines. So right when you say that word, you already get tight because nobody likes discipline, right? You think of punishment or you think of something really hard. But this is not what this is. Spiritual disciplines is more about what you're practicing. We're going to practice our faith, right? So we started off about being rooted in glory. Minister Yolanda preached a powerful word last week about being rooted in submission. And uh, why don't we put up our slide of the different disciplines. There's a lot of disciplines that um, we want to um, talk about. We, well, we've been trying to go through. There's inward disciplines. There's outward disciplines. And then there's corporate disciplines. These are all the things that will help you be rooted in your faith. If you want to see God in your life, it's that, not that you just show up on Sundays and get your little Sunday high and then go out into the week. No, it's a daily thing that we are practicing. We're practicing, just like if you are on a sports team, if you, whatever hobby you like, whatever you got good at doing, you had to practice it. So why, why, why don't we do the same? Why don't we have the same mentality when it comes to our faith? We actually have to practice these things in our lives, amen? So today, we're going to talk about being rooted in simplicity, I don't know. And when's the last time you heard a sermon about simplicity? <laughs> Being rooted in simplicity. So this will be a good concept for us to sit in for a little bit. Um, I remember back in the day, do y'all remember when you had a crush on someone and you would do a little note, do you like me, yes or no? Y'all remember that? And then, then do, do you remember like a few years back when someone asked you, hey, are you in a relationship? The answer was usually simple, yes or no, right? But of, uh, as of late, you ask somebody if they are in a relationship, it could be three answers. Yes, no, or it's complicated. Don't, don't worry about it. I'm in a situationship. Anybody even in a situationship? You don't have to raise your hand. I didn't want to look. <laughs> Some people sitting by their booth like, like mm -mm -mm -mm. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Like the wine that said, I don't know if y'all remember that song, Bring Back the Days of Yeah and Nay. Lauren always know. <laughs> That's an old school song. When things were just uncomplicated, when things weren't so complex. So the, even the word simplicity, when I said it, it's like a foreign word, like what? What is simplicity? What is simple? Because everything that's been given to us or advertised for us is to go bigger, better, more bling, do all the things, go all out, be extra. That's what we are told to be in this day and age. Like, no one wants to do simple. What is simple? Girl, I'm trying to come, I'm coming, trying to come in snatched. <laughs> all eyes. Like, we want all the things, right? So... This is foreign to us. This is a whole concept. But um, there's so many ways that God wants to show us why we need this in our life. So this sermon could easily turn into a sermon about decluttering or minimalizing, which we all probably need to do anyway. By the way, I'm obsessed with tiny homes. That's just a, that's just a side note. I just had to get that out my minimizing my life. So one of my, we probably do need, anybody think of some areas in their life, you should probably declutter. You should probably, you know, there's some things, we, we all got that one closet, that one room, that one, you know, some under your bed. I'm okay, I'm already going too, too far. This could easily turn into a sermon about that. But often we don't talk about how to declutter our hearts, how to declutter our minds, from things that complicate our lives, right? Whatever you are lacking on the inside shows up on the outside. Y'all catch that? 
Anything you're lacking on the inside, you show it on the outside. For example, if your house is a mess, no shade to anyone, because, yeah, because of mine's. If your house is a mess, your, your, your mind is usually a mess. Is, am I right? If you have low self-esteem, generally we tend to overcompensate for that with materialistic things. Have y'all seen that? If you struggle with scarcity, you probably all about team hustle, right? You always trying to get financial gain. Like, I'm about to get this money. Because you, maybe you have some scarcity issues, like you've dealt with poverty or whatever going on on the inside, it tends to show up on the outside. But I want to talk briefly about the cause, the roots of these things the cause and the roots of a cluttered life and a complex life and how to simplify it through the word of God. How many are ready to declutter your life, your mind, your soul? I hope that, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gonna learn how to do that today through the word of God. So our passage today is 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 10. I'm reading from the Amplified version. Um, it's Probably a little long, but we, gonna, we got this. We got this. It says, but godliness actually is the source of great gain when accompanied by contentment. Somebody say contentment. That contentment which comes from a sense of inner confidence based on the sufficiency of God. For we brought nothing into the world. Y'all thought that was just a phrase, huh? That's actually in the Bible. For we have brought nothing into the world, so it is clear that we cannot take anything out of it either. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who are not financially ethical and crave to get rich with a compulsive, greedy longing for wealth fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction, leading to personal misery. My God, it got real silent. Verse 10, for the love of money, that is the greedy desire for it and the willingness to gain it unethically is the root of all sorts of evil. And some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves through and through with many sorrows. Somebody say, whew. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. That just hit a lot. That that was just like some two pieces when I was reading it. Like, geez. The love of money. The, from the prophets, the mighty prophets of the OJs tried to tell us about the love of money, what it would do into our hearts. But if I, I just want to put this whole sermon, I'm, I'm going to tell you the end of the sermon now, all right? You only have to guess what the sermon is about. The whole, this whole premise of this, sermon, of this sermon is about leaning into contentment. Leaning into contentment helps us resist the pull of greed. That's the whole sermon. If you were to leave right now, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't even be offended. Just the whole sermon. Leaning in, into contentment helps us to resist the pull of greed. How? How do we do this? First of all, let's talk about leaning into contentment. First, when we hear contentment, I want you to be clear that I'm not talking about settling. Sometimes we'd be like, oh, I'm just supposed to be content, I guess, with the life I have and don't have any ambitions for anything else. I'm not talking about settling. Instead, it's a contentment that comes from a sense of inner confidence based on the sufficiency of God. That's true contentment. True contentment is knowing God's got your back. God's got me versus then, you know what, God taking too long, so I got to go out here and hurry up and do what I got to do because, look, everybody like, been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, don't go that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Contentment is knowing that God is your source. 
Contentment is, is knowing as uh, Richard Foster, he has this wonderful book called Celebrating Disciplines. Simp uh, it talks about contentment and how simplicity helps with this. Simplicity helps us to set possessions in their proper perspective. That's what contentment does. It helps us to see what it really is, what it is for what it is. So if we are just operating out of a sense of greed, we're not tapping into being content. That's a hard place to be because everything we see on TV, every advertisement, every marketer has told us what you got is not sufficient and you really need this new shiny thing. You need an iPhone titanium. Why? Why, sir? Why I need that? Right? Always selling you and then people are like, oh, you still got that old iPhone 6? People really be like, own you, right? Look, right? They're giving us a hard time. I won't even go to the Android people. It's okay. God loves you. <laughs> God loves you. You don't need an iPhone. Kind of. All right. Kind of. Okay, never mind. So this is what, this is a prime example of how our, our, um, our world, our culture wants to sell us things, sell us things without us ever being content. But let me give you just three attitudes that we are supposed to have about possessions. Let's talk about possessions. Because possessions aren't bad. Having money, not bad, right? But this is how we are to hold possessions. Number one, what we have, we receive as a gift. Whatever God gives you, it's a gift. Come on, think about all that you have. It's not yours. It's not hands off. It's not just for me. It's a gift, right? Second, what we have is to be cared for by God. It, it, it's, it's God's. God stewards it, whether it's people, whether it's relationships, whether it's possessions, is to be cared for by God. The third one, what we have is available to others. This is how we learn to be content, and this is how we simplify how we hold our possessions. I always say we hold it with an open hand, where God is free to take out whatever he needs to or put back in as God feels. But if you have a tight fist like that, Nothing can go out and nothing can come in. And this is how we hold our things. It's mine. I grew up an only child. Any other only children in here? Yay, look at us. We don't share. We don't. My, my husband's always mad at me because, you know, we, when it comes to food, like, he's like, ooh, what you get with? And I'm, mm, you should have ordered your own. It's mine. Right? So I, I have to develop. I have to practice leaning into sharing. <laughs> I feel judged. <laughs> I didn't have siblings, okay? No one taught me. So how do we hold these things? This is how we can hold a lens of simplicity, where everything, you don't have to have such a tight grip on it. That if it, if it goes... Then, God, then it goes, and God's your source, and God's going to bless me with something else. Or I'm able to share with others, yeah, sure, you can have some, because God is going to bless me again. It's not the last time you'll have money. It's not the last time you'll have a car. It's not the last time you'll have these possessions. I'm free to give with an open hand, for sure, because it all belongs to God anyway. Right? Your kids, come on, parents, we got to talk about these kids. They belong to God. We're just here to steward them and point them in the right. Y'all go this way. But if they chose to go left, then I said go this way. But hey, God gives everybody a free choice. They belong to God. And you can care for it in that way. Then you don't have to hold everything so tightly. Unlo come on, everybody do like this. Just unloose your hand. Just un yeah, just let it go. Let it go. They have a frozen moment. Let it go. I love this. Simplicity, this is what Paul tells us, knows how, help, simplicity knows contentment is both abasement and abounding. Philippians 4, this is a, this is a very popular verse. Y'all all know this verse. Philippians 4, 
12 and 13. It says, I know what it is to have little. Anybody know that? I know what it is to have little. I know what it is. What, I know what it is to have plenty in any and all circumstances. I've learned the secret. Paul said, I have a secret. And there's a secret of being well fed and of going hungry and of having plenty and of having need. What is the secret, Paul? The secret is I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So y'all thought that was for the gym. Y'all thought y'all was for a marathon. You thought that was for when you, you was nervous and you had to do a speech and you go, I can do all things through Christ. Yeah, yeah, you can apply it to that. But in, in context, Paul was saying, it don't matter. I can have a lot. I can have a little. I could be hungry. I could be full. But I've learned the secret of contentment. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So even when I'm going through my lean season, God going to give me strength through it. It's good. It's just a season. There's never a perpetual winter. There's never a perpetual. Seasons got to change, baby. I want you to speak to you. Think about your storm. No storm lasts forever. Check the weather pattern. Things change. So while you're going through your season, say, God's going to give me strength through this. Even in your season, if you got everything, you look around like, oh, girl, my bills are paid this month. Okay, got a little change left over. God, give me strength to have discipline, to budget in my season of plenty. Right? We be out here like, ah, it's good. Where we going? <laughs> or we flying out too. I got a little chain. Oh, with this, should, I should save this sermon for tax season. That's what I'm, <laughs> in April, y'all hearing this again. <laughs> Just know, cause y'all be boiling out on them tax returns. Contentment. So how do we lean into this contentment? We got to resist the pull of greed. Somebody say greed. Greed. See, greed is now, we tend to think of Scrooge McDuck. Y'all might not know that, y'all young. Y'all remember Scrooge McDuck? Be swimming in his little fortune. And we think, if that's what we think about greed, like, oh, I'm not like that. But greed is very insidious. It's a perpetual trap. And it keeps telling you, I'll be good after one more. Perpetually. And then you get it, you be like, I'll be good one more, one more, one more, one more, one more, one more. You know? (laughs) One more relationship. One more one-nighter. One more Amazon purchase. <laughs> I'm going to stay out y'all business. One more pair of Jordans. Help me, Jesus. Oh Help, me. <laughs> Help. I'll be on the altar. Y'all just pray over me. Greed will tell you just one more, just one more. And you will find after a pattern and after years and after a loss of money and, lo- and heartache, you'll find that it's a bottomless pit. This flesh and greed will never be satisfied. You can throw everything at it and they'll still want more. Ask yourself after Thanksgiving dinner, why are you still hungry? You done ate everything. But we still we need more, we need more, we need more. This is why we have to have disciplines, spiritual disciplines intact, that we don't just let our flesh run us. We say, uh-uh, that's enough, okay. I'm going to set some parameters. I'm going to give myself some boundaries. I'm going to tell myself this far and no more. This is what's simple. So we have to simplify ourselves and we have to lean into contentment and we have to resist greed. You know how you resist greed? (laughs) Well, you know, and you you resist greed. You know how to kill greed? I'm going to give you all a secret. You know how to kill greed? I'm going to tell you right now. Everybody lean in. Take notes. How you kill greed is you develop a habit of giving things away. Yeah. You want to kill greed? Give it away. 
And I'm not talking about your old stuff. You'd be like, I don't even wear these no more. You can have them. I don't even fit these no more. I'm, girl, I'm bringing you some clothes. Cause not that stuff. Things you like. Things that are precious to you. Maybe things you are collecting. Maybe this, this will touch on all the nerves. Give it away. <laughs> Speak, Lord. I don't know. My husband, we, he grew up in Word of Faith. Y'all don't even know about Word of Faith people. They take something off. They, he'd be like, you say, hey, I like your tie, brother. You like this tie? Here, you can have it right here. Here you go, brother. That was, a, that was a way that people would just get, I will give you what I have right now. You, need, you like these shoes? Here, you can have them. What size you wear? Because then that will keep you free from greed. Come on, think about it. Think about something that you could just give away, something you like. That's how you kill it. You kill it, kill it. <laughs> and also you lean into contentment. You lean into greed. Be, and, and the way you do that is that you have to reject anything that's producing an addiction in you. Reduce anything, I mean anything. Reject anything that is producing addiction. An addiction by its very nature is something that is beyond your control. Like even if you want to try, you can't. Even when you want to stop, you got the can't help it. That's an addiction. And that could be anything, not just drugs or anything hardcore. That could be your coffee. Okay, sorry. Yeah, no, like, oh, not she done held up the Skittles. You want to put them on the altar? Come on, put this. Put your Skittles on the altar. <laughs> oh, Lord. Speak, Lord. An addiction in, is by its very nature something that we can't control. So we want to be able to give these things to God. Be able to say, you know, I don't want, or one of the models of my life is I don't want to be addicted to nothing but Jesus. So when it starts creeping up on me, be like, no, no, it's time for me to put you down because you over here. Coffee was trying to punk me for a minute. I was like, you ain't going to just make me because I got a headache. Oh, okay. It's going to time to put you down for a second, right? So we've got to set up practices, disciplines that will curb these things to be like, you won't control me. Actually, I am spirit control. I am led by the spirit. I'm not led by my flesh, right? That's the life we want to live. We want to be spirit led, not flesh led. Now, this is uh, one more point. I want to talk about us having a uh, developing a proper perspective about money. Because this is a, a touchy subject, especially for people of color, black folks, marginalized people. Um, money is a touchy subject because it's kind of hard to tell, you know, like don't want things or be nice things or have when you ain't never had nothing nice and you just want to have something nice and be able to be in something nice and new and shiny, right? So that's not the, the problem is not money. One of the top misquoted verses in the Bible is 1 Timothy 6 and 10. We always say money is the root of all evil. The only other people be like, ooh, child, money. I told, see, you hear about this, that money is the root of all evil. Actually, no. What does it really say? The love of money. It's the love. So money is neutral, right? Money is neither good or bad. Money is a, just a tool. It's a man-made construct, really, if you think about it. We created this system of how to barter and how to get things, and then we could just go off on capitalism, but we won't do that today. But money is just a tool. It's how you use it. So you, now you have to interrogate, interrogate your why. Why? Why are you buying it? What are you trying to prove? Are you trying to get your validation from the things that you buy? Are you trying to be like, yeah, they thought I was loud. Look at me, I'm out here. Are you trying to flex? Are you trying to get back at people who's counted you out? You have to interrogate your why. Why do you want to be rich? If you were wealthy, how would it benefit anybody but you? Unless you're giving it away. God bless me with money so I could be a blessing to others. That's, the, that's a good prayer, if you really hold to it. 
Some of y'all be praying that over the lottery, but I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep moving. What really is real riches? Because if we look at this verse, it, um, we, we talk about it all the time, even those with the most money are the most miserable at times. You be in this perplexity. It's like, y'all got all the things. And you know what? I would, okay, I'll be sad in my little swimming pool, just swimming or in my sauna. Like, it feels like once you get all the things that you will be content. But we have seen time and time again, once people have money, it doesn't fulfill them. Have y'all seen that? Are we, you know, but yet we still are like, I want money too. It won't be me. God, give me a chance. Sure, let me prove them wrong. <laughs> if you bless me with the lotto, it, I'm going to pay my tithes, right? <laughs> what is real riches? According to this passage where we were at in 1 um, in, uh, Timothy, it says, um, that there is something mentioned that's greater than money, and I hope you caught it. It says, godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. I love the way the Amplify put it. It's actually a source of great gain when accompanied by a t- uh, uh, contentment. So it's not the money that is the gain. It's Godliness. Why we never hear about this? Godliness is actually the true riches. Have y'all read this? I was like, wait, hold up. So what is godliness? Godly means conforming to the character of God in your thoughts, your feelings, your desires, and your actions. So actually, this is where your true riches lie. Godliness Mix it with some contentment, and then you got great gain. It's a, it's a math formula. <laughs> Godliness plus contentment equals great gain. You want to have great gain in your life? You want to be fulfilled genuinely? You want to be fulfilled? You want to be a person who has joy no matter what the circumstance, whether it's up, whether it's down, whether you got a lot of or you got not, whether you're in a relationship or you're not. The secret is contentment, godliness. God, I just want to be like you. I want to have your thoughts. I want to have your heart. I want to have your eyes. I want to have your character. I want to treat people the way you want, how you would treat. I want to see people the way you see them. That's actually great gain. Somehow we don't ascribe to that. I don't know how that we didn't get the memo on that. Um, but uh, I love that. I love that. So our prayer Lord, help us to be rooted in simplicity. Let that be at the core of our being. Help me not to have to do all the things, buy all the things, show all the things to feel validated. Help me to be rooted in that. So that when things come and go, it doesn't phase me. Things come and go. Money comes and goes. And they're not bothering me. I still got peace. I still got joy. Bank account looking good? Okay, cool. Bank account low? Well, hey. Because I have contentment. Right? We have to. We just said we want to be rooted in glory. But these things, these practices, help us to make room for God's glory. See, our hearts are too cluttered. Our minds are too complicated. Things are too complex. We have to, just like you declutter that house, we got to declutter our hearts and our minds to make room for Jesus. Jesus is trying to come in. He walking in all. I got, don't got nowhere to sit. Wiping off. Like, Hold on, Jesus. Let me just throw it in the closet. Right? We want to be able to have hearts that are open and free. God, you could come in and have your way. Jesus is like, where? Where I'm supposed to sit? All the stuff, right? And I, what I love about God is God doesn't just, we'd be like, take it away, Jesus. Just take it away. Uh, some things we, we have to have ownership of. Some things we have to intentionally do. We got to move them boxes out of our hearts. We got to put things away, right? God is inviting us into this. So to wrap it up, simplicity is the practice of letting go non-essential things in your life. 
It allows you to make space for what really matters to you, both physically and mentally. What really matters? Paring down your heart. Paring down people you've been holding on so tightly to that you're going to need to give them to God. It's above me now. And, and you know what? At this point, it's above me now. I'm going to have to give you to God. And trusting that God's going to take good care of them. God's going to take good care of the situation. This is really going back to, do we really trust and depend on God? So always remember that simplicity is both a discipline and a grace. It's something we have to practice. It's not something you come down to the altar and we pray over you and you got it. Right? I got it forever. Get it. Got it. Good. No. It's something you have to do all the time. When you got 50 things in your cart, in your, in your, in your shopping cart, in the, in the online cart, that you're just saving and waiting, that's when you say, you know what? Not, not this month. I'm just going to get maybe one thing. Just one. I don't need all the things. I'm going to pare down. It's a grace. And it's something that we don't do on our own. We don't work it up like, ooh, I'm going to really do it this time. No. It's leaning into God's grace. God, help me. Give me the discipline. Give me, help me to see what I really need and what I really don't need. This is all the invitation God is inviting you. I just want you to come closer to me. I want to talk to you about these things. Talk it over with me. Well, should I get this or not? It's all an invitation of God's like, come on, come talk to me. I want to help you. I'm here for you. It's not, it is a discipline because we are called to do something. Simplicity does not just fall on our heads. We are to take it up consciously and choose it as a course of action in our individual lives. So I want to close with one of my favorite verses. One of my favorite verses is Psalms 131, 1 and 2. It says, O Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me, but I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. Just sit in that for a minute, because we're talking about simplicity. And I believed in this whole sermon series about being rooted, that God is maturing us that we're growing up in God, where we're no longer a spiritual toddler when we don't get our way that we have a tantrum. When God says, there's another way to do this, we don't fall out. We don't cry at everything that happens to us. We don't fall out every time God says no. Because when God says no, it's just redirection, right? And when God says no, it's really, wait, I have something better, right? But you try to say that to a toddler. <laughs> Y'all know. <laughs> try to say that to a toddler. Try to take something from a toddler. Try to take, and this is how, you're right. And what do toddlers are famous for is mine or no. And this is how we are in the spirit. God is mine. No. But I love this car. I love this room. I love this space. I love this house. I love that person. They're mine. And God is saying, I love this verse because it's like, like a weaned child, my soul is quieted. Any moms in here who have successfully weaned a child? It is tough work. Them babies act up when they can't get what they, what they used to. Right, they got the nerve to unbutton stuff. When you learn how to unbutton, <laughs> sir. I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't use, right? And we all, you know, I'm, I love, I'm for breastfeeding, I'm pro breastfeeding, but anybody, we think it's quite strange if someone was 10 years old still breastfeeding, right? It would be too much. And yet, in the spirit, that's how we can be when we don't grow up and mature. We're still reaching for things that are beyond us. So like a weaned child, God, I'm growing up in you. 
And when you say no, I'm like a winged child who is like, okay, you got something better. Oh, a sippy cup. Okay, cool. <laughs> right? I have something better. I'm like a winged child. My soul is quieted within me. I'm not causing a ruckus. I'm not mad at God. I'm not protesting. I'm not making cross my arms and be like, well, God didn't give me what I wanted, so I'm mad. This is how we do in the spirit. So, God, this is our prayer. Help us to grow up and mature. God, we need the discipline of simplicity. God, help us to budget. Help us to walk within our means. Help us to be content. We don't have to settle. We can have ambitions for more. But help us to realize it all comes from you. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. But let our prayer be, blessed be the name of the Lord. I will bless the Lord. So how will we practice simplicity? Oh, yes. Can you do a little bit? You going to sing a little bit of that? Um, our reflection questions, we're going to practice simplicity. Y'all there? Yes, thank you. These are things I want to take back with you. I want you to think about during the week. What non-essential thing can you let go of to make space for you, both physically and spirit? I mean, sp physically and mentally. Number two, what areas in your life do you need to resist greed? And three, where do you need to lean into contentment? These are the things we want you to sit with this week. Yeah, let me move out the way so y'all can get Yes, I got you. I'm all in the way. Yes. Take a picture. Take notes. Sit with these things this week. God, how can I live a more simple life? What are my motivations behind what I do? So um, let's also, at this time, as we're sitting in this and as we're talking about simplicity, let's prepare for uh, communion at this time. So y'all, oh, well, it's okay. Let's prepare for communion. Those who are getting a communion, are they coming out? It's important that um, communion is following this important time as we're talking about simplicity because the message of the gospel is so simple that it's, all, it's almost unbelievable. It's almost too good to be true that a God would love us so much that he would die on the cross and take the place for my sins. It's almost unbelievable. So as we are preparing our hearts and our minds to take the elements today, I want us to focus on how amazing this God is. We, we serve an uncomplicated God in the way that salvation could have been a whole thing. If it was up to me, y'all better be glad because I would have had y'all doing all kind of stuff to be saved. <laughs> nope, you didn't do it. Go back. You did it wrong, right? It could have been all types of steps, all types of things you had to earn. You, you could, it could have been a whole thing, but yet God made it so simple. Believe on me. Yes, yes. Just believe on me. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's so simple. It's so simple that it's almost ridiculous. Like, that's it? That's it. Come on. Just... I love you just because you exist, yes. period, yes. says God. Nothing you need to do to earn salvation, nothing you could do to earn grace. Simply believe we have a God who practices simplicity. Isn't that good news? So in that, as we're taking our elements, I want you to think about that. As we're getting ready for communion, I want everyone to stand. We could play our... Um, it reaches a song. 
Everyone stand.